up and we met up. Hmm. And it was on again. I stayed out there for quite some time and got a real education. What kind of education did you get? Huh? What kind of education did oh you get? Oh boy, you should only know. That place was wild and woolly back in them 60s. Hmm. Especially where I landed. Hollywood and Vine. Oh no. <laughs> I was staying at the, the Vine Motel right above Capitol Records. It was a way of wafer, a wafers. Wafer, how do they say that? W-A-F-A-I-R. Wayfair? Yeah. Kind of anybody that rolled into town was saying. Hmm. Hotel California. Yeah. Just like it. Well, what'd you do in California? When I got there. Build or carpentry? Yeah, I done some uh, doing rehab work with a couple different companies I got started with. And uh, yeah, we were doing good. It was inexpensive to stay. And, Always had something going on. I had a lot of fun at it. Then, uh, oh, then uh, uh, my neighbor who owned this lumber yard back east called me and told me about an opportunity with somebody that asked about me, and I eventually lined that up and I headed back east. I never did see my parents um, because they had actually already moved out to California. My old man got a promotion from the East Coast to the West Coast, and, <laughs> and there they were, and I was on my own out there at that <laughs> but, So they, like, followed you out there, huh? Sort of, but I had no recognition of that. Yeah. No way of knowing. No way of knowing. Yeah. And, and it's kind of crazy. When I eventually did see my old man, it was a couple of years or so later, I went out there for some reason or another. My sister, maybe. Um, something with her and her kids. Or, Timing is messed up, but uh, ah, we finally started to get along. That was a real improvement from where it had been. But him and my mom had separated. My old man was on his one of his ramps. Oh yeah, he done that quite often between that and gambling. Mm. And. Uh, Ah, that was a difficult time. Hmm. So what did Dad do out there? He was a, uh, a manufacturer's rep for electronics. So he, he imported and exported from Taiwan and Korea and China hmm. all these new technology things from the, remember the pen watches? Yeah. And remember <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the bootleg uh, Rolexes? Shit, he had me bring some back across the border. Uh -huh. yeah, I had a nice little storage place in the back of my seats. And I, one time he had me bring back 10,000 or more of them. Wow. And uh, yeah, I had them stuffed in the back of that El Camino. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> they they checked me out at the border and checked my license and all of that stuff and went through the truck and never found nothing. Oh, I was sweating bullets. Back then, they would have been able to see my sweat. You know, I mean, now they'd be able to see you sweating and make you shaking like that. They'd have rusted you anyway. And then they just passed me over. And, didn't even uh, say the. No. 
10,000 watches. <laughs> they were just in that, they're in back of the El Camino when they curved that back hmm. bed instead of from the square bed. That was back in 79, I think. Mm -hmm. They had all that compartment in the back of your seats. And it had a little velour thing that covered it up. Most of the time, nobody went through that when they checked you at the border. They looked in your thing, looked in the back the cab, and then you were good to go. Huh. Hey. And, uh, what did he do with it? Oh, he so he used to sell that stuff, everywhere. right. He'd take them and distribute them around to his dealers. He knew the guy from Sam's Club and uh, Walmart. And, mm -hmm. well, on the ground floor, he was always, mm -hmm. he brought in them cell phones. Remember when they were big bulky yeah, things? Big bulky phones. Well, he brought in the next generation, the ones that started what we're dealing with now. And when he told me about that, he said, Dave, this is going to be the biggest home run that I ever hit. Every time he used to say that, I said, yeah. And he said, I mean it, this is big. And he uh, had his own little company, and then the, the, and being a, um, an importer and exporter, you actually have a factory warehouse out in China or Taiwan with your name of the company high techs his name was Texas high tech or something <laughs> so out there they were making all of these products for Texas high tech and it come in with that name on it and it was part of the series that we're dealing with now hmm. hell when he brought them things to that warehouse it was crazy I worked in the warehouse for a while. He sold uh, a bunch of auto uh, things for the stereos, equalizers, boosters. Remember when all of that was yeah. big? Well, I was putting them in at this warehouse in the back. We make money like that. And then I was selling at these flea markets. He'd give me a bunch of merchandise, and I had a business name of my own, and I sold them out. And I'd come back and work for him on Monday to Friday, and I, we were getting along pretty good. I was pissed that he was away from my mom and all, and she was, uh, she was already a cancer survivor. I had cancer on the lung, caught it early. Mm -hmm. and, um, and of course, you know, he was with the secretary, the whole thing was about. And, uh, Ah, hell, we had a vacation once. He had a 40-foot thing he rented, big rig, and went to the Midwest and traveled around. And I got in that El Camino and tailed him along the way and sold it to markets and stuff mm. like that. Wow. Lasted a couple of years like that until there was a girl I knew from... Uh, Jersey that moved to Houston, Texas. So I got Nancy an and I wanted to go to Houston, Texas and meet her. <laughs> and that's what I done. Packed up my shit and started heading that way. And he set it up so I could go to Brownsville and Laredo. <laughs> and that's what we done. And I'd take the stuff and go out on the road and sell it. <laughs> he wasn't gonna let you go. No. <laughs> nope. You were a stop salesman. <laughs> yeah, I was close. I like to use that stuff, but oh, he was selling at you know, least a, a volume a lot of places. Even across the border. It took me with him a few days. He used to sell across the border. I'm telling you so. Well, my old man could sell you anything. He'd never come back without a sale. I ain't like him in that way. He's, he wouldn't let nobody walk. He convinced you you needed that. That's just the way he was. He was persuasive. He was old school New York. Hmm. That's the way.